Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 679. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the best sectors for the last five years. Because as you know, I like to pepper in some top performing sectors along with the usual suspects. That is our usual S&P 500 as our large cap index, a mid cap index, a small cap index, international emerging markets, real estate, etc. We like to have some other sectors for 5 to 20% of our portfolio. Why? Because if you can have some faster growing sectors that are concentrated and are fast growing, it's a way to be diversified and not take a lot of risk, but to pick some areas of the economy that are doing exceptionally well, and that will probably continue to grow well. So this actually comes to us from Charlie Bellello, who is the founder and CEO of Compound Capital Advisors. I happen to follow him on Twitter. And so this is uh, found on my Twitter page at Linda P. Jones. And he went through some of the top S&P 500 sector returns for the last five years. Now, if we just look at the S&P 500 and what it's done for five years, it's averaged a great 12.23% return every year for five years. Now, why that is so great is because I always talk about the 10% average annual return of the stock market being that guide that we kind of use for our compounding averages. And for someone who's just an average investor, that's a very attainable rate of return. You don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to take undue risk. You don't have to borrow money, leverage. You don't have to do any of that. You're just basically getting the averages of the indexes in the stock market. So along with that, in 5 to 20% of your portfolio, you can use some additional sectors to see if you can get a little bit better performance. But here's what I want to point out. We're already doing 20% better in the last five years because the S&P is up 12.23% each year for five years. And so therefore, we are 20% ahead of our expected 10% target average annual return. So that's awesome. We're already ahead of the game. But here's the thing. There are some sectors that have some good total return numbers for the last five years. Now, can you guess which one is the fastest growing sector for the last five years? Well, if you guess technology, you're right. The technology sector, which Charlie is measuring with the symbol XLK, has been up 162% over five years. Next is the communications sector, symbol XLC, has been up 111% for the last five years. Now, these are total return numbers, so these are not per year numbers. They're for the total of the five years. Consumer discretionary is the third best performing sector in the S&P, symbol XLY, up 89%. Financial, symbol XLF, up 75% over five years. Next are utilities, symbol XLU, up 67%. Industrials, symbol XLI, up 64%. Healthcare, symbol XLV, up 59%. Consumer staples, Symbol XLP up 49%. Real estate, symbol XLRE up 49%. Materials, symbol XLB up 33%. And energy is the only one that's had a negative return for five years. Symbol XLE is down 19% during that time. 
Technology being number one isn't really all that shocking because we've had companies that just came into existence a mere 20 years ago that have grown into, or maybe a little longer, some of them, but they've grown into the behemoths of today, the trillion dollar companies today, like Apple, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Some of those are older than 20 years. Some of those are right around 20 years old. But technology has been amazing in terms of its innovation and how we've adapted that into our everyday lives and how it's become monetized and profitable for these companies, mainly through advertising with a lot of the technology, of course, selling software and hardware from Microsoft and Apple. But I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. And one of the reasons I'm so bullish for the 2020s and why I think it is a repeat of the roaring 20s is because we have so much new technology on the table. We have 5G on the table, the internet of things. We have virtual reality. We have electric cars. We have trips to outer space. We have flying cars. We have all kinds of new technology that are just coming into focus. And who knows what's really gonna catch on and be something we use in our everyday life, just like our telephone that we carry around with us every day, not just as a phone, but as a connection to the internet, as a connection to social media, as a tool that we can use to make our lives easier. There's many more things that are going to come into our lives and be the next generation of technology. So we've just begun to scratch the surface. This is going to create a lot more wealth in the stock market and personal wealth for shareholders. Now, along with that, we had a knockout jobs report come in with non-farm payroll surging 225,000 new jobs for the month, well above Wall Street estimates for 158,000 job gain. And the unemployment rate was a little bit higher at 3.6%, but that was all for the right reason as the labor force participation rate increased 0.2 percentage points to 63.4%, matching its highest level since June of 2013. And average hourly earnings rose 3.1% over a year ago to $28.44, ahead of estimates for 3% growth. So hourly earnings are going up, more people are working, more new jobs added. That is why I don't see any recession happening this year. More people employed means more money they have to spend, means the consumer sentiment is going to be strong, and as you know, the consumer makes up 70% of the U.S. economy. So if more people have jobs and are feeling good and are spending, that means it's unlikely, in my opinion, that we'll see a recession this year. Again, this is also an election year, and usually the economy fires on all cylinders during an election year. So everything is still looking very on track, very positive, and although we've had a bit of a pullback here. The market is looking very strong and it's quite possible that we may see money come in from overseas into this U.S. market that will drive it even higher. So I continue to be very bullish on the stock market, bullish on getting our average 10% annual return and even being ahead of plan at least for the last five years with the S&P 500. If you enjoy this podcast, I'm happy to announce I have an Instagram live program starting on Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to join me over there, we'll be talking live and I'll be answering your questions and sharing a little bit more with you. And don't forget, we have our review contest going where you can win 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. And I'll give away 10 copies of my book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now, which was named to the list of best wealth books of all time by Book Authority. And five people will win a one-on-one -on -one wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a review on iTunes that will get your name in the drawing one time. If you have an Android phone, leave your review on stitcher.com, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. 
That will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read The Wealth Heiress book and leave a review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. Winners will be announced in mid-March. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.